recording? It is recording. Greetings, unsettled souls. It is Sam I.B. DeGangie. Voodoo Moonshine. I am here with, am I saying that? What, how do you say your last name? La Sawyer. It is La Sawyer. I was thinking it like yep. vaguely like the Rush song. All right. Yep. You are listening to Neopa Radio 1025 FM. Once again, Jeff LaSawyer from Voodoo Moonshine. How you been? No, I'm good. How you been, man? I appreciate you having me. I'm loving it. You ever heard of Canton, Ohio before today? Yep. Yep. I've heard of it. Oh, that is good. That that is that that's that that in and of itself is amazing. Usually the, the answer is no. That's good. Have you heard good things or bad? Yeah, you know, we we did a show up in Ohio, somewhere in Ohio with uh Texas Hippie Coalition last uh last it was a festival show. Oh but, that was uh, great. Yeah, yeah, it was a good show. Um yeah, I've got I've got a friend that lives out in Ohio, but Canton, that's uh and they're like football and all that stuff at that way. That watch. is. There's a real good right. chance that people are going to hear your very words uh, broadcast or at least posted and seen during Hall of Fame week, which is gearing up. It's underway. Yep. All right. Yep. So I've noticed, you guys, for those of you that don't know, um, in my opinion anyway, they have a classic kind of 80s sound. And I wanted to ask, do, do you think that music that is rooted in talent and depth is about to blossom again, sort of in rebellion to the more lackluster music that's on the charts today? Well, God, I hope so. I, I mean, I, I really hope so, you know, because it's, uh, it's like everyone kind of just played down their abilities for the last however many years. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that... Uh, guitar solos and uh, five octave voice ranges and, and things like that come back, you know. I, I think, you know, obviously the 80s had to kill itself off because it was getting it was getting a little ridiculous, man. It was uh, it was becoming more of a, a show than it was uh, an ability, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, when that happened, a lot of great musicians just lost everything. So, you know, I'm hoping it, it all comes back, you know. That would be nice to turn on the radio and not hear the same song, just with a different genre. It would be nice. Right. Uh, yes. Vital question. <clears throat> Where is the porno sample from at the start of Bring It Down, and who picked it? <laughs> that was uh, that was our, our uh, producer, Sean Shannon. He uh, used to play drums for Molly Hatchet and uh, Pat Travers. And I, I told him, you know, kind of what I wanted, and he... Happened to find it. How? I don't know. <laughs> but he it got, works. He got paid to look it up. Now, that's a job. There you go. Yeah, it, it worked out. Good. Yeah. That had to be. That's, that brings quite a lot of experience to the process, bringing in anybody from Molly Hatchet. Yeah, the guy's amazing. He's uh, He was an amazing drummer, but he's, he, he's already slated to uh, produce the new album. You know, we the album's been out since February, and we're already ready to go back in the studio in September. I think we probably have six or seven songs already ready. Oh, that's great news. Well, we're trying to stockpile, man. You know, instead of just rushing and rushing, you know, to get everything done, we, we kind of get a lot of things done at our leisure as opposed to just cramming it and it, it you know, not coming out as well as we'd like. And that's going to, any, any the, a lot of times I think, particularly on second CDs, the band feels like they're rushed. So the idea that you guys are going into it already, you know, ready for it is going to avoid that. Very yeah. Much. Yeah. We just released uh, this new video for give it to me. And, you know, we already have another video ready that will be put out in probably three or four months, you know, so we're, we're trying to think ahead about things, you know, I'm happy that you mentioned that because my next question is, I thought there was a Blues Brothers nod of sorts in uh, the latest single, Give It To Me. Um, was that intentional? And have you ever played a show similar to that situation? No, no, I haven't had to worry about that or, or walk into that. But I just thought uh, I thought that it would be kind of cool. And I guess the reason I initially thought about it was because the next single or the new video was supposed to have been What a Way to Go, which is um, southerny kind of country. It's got slide guitar and all this. Uh, but when I got it to our radio people, it was too long. They wanted to cut it down. And I said, absolutely not. 
Oh, I hate uh, when they do that. Yeah, I'm like, hell no. You know, this is all I have left out of it. If it, if it ends tomorrow, all I have left is our songs. And um, I said, no, nah, you want to you want a three minute, 30 second song? Here you go. So we we did the video. And I guess because what a way to go is kind of country, southerny. Uh, it kind of popped in my head, hoping that it, it can lead off from where Give It To Me leads off with the country bars, you know, setting into the the southern uh, of the next video and the next single very good I, I, I the reason i asked is i was in a uh, an electronic sort of industrial band but there were like keyboard solos and things in it and this charity had booked my band at a festival after 9 11 and there was supposed to be a country band and us and the idea was that you know ones for people that don't like country ones for those that do and the snow put the country band inside and they wouldn't play outside so then they canceled and put us inside and oh my god i actually got to live your video and it's a frightening experience <laughs> yeah well you you know i mean anywhere you, you go into a situation like that you don't know what you're walking into you know oh, it was a, it was a blast it, because half the people were like you made the night and other people were like you were terrible <laughs> was, yeah yeah well, you can't make everybody happy, so screw them, you know? The video made me very happy. For those of you that don't know, I'm glad I haven't given more detail. I probably should have, but I'm glad I didn't, because now you're going to want to look it up. It's called Give It To Me. You can find it on YouTube. It is hilarious. It's this uh, a rock and roll band that walks into, let's just say, the wrong setting. You guys have to watch it. Um, I, I mentioned here the backing vocals on Locked and Loaded. It has that... Um, those chanting vocals and it sort of leads into the solo that's like really stands out on that how did both of those come to be because it sort of mixed the uh i don't want to say expected but the i guess for lack of a better word the kind of chorusy chanty post ramon sound but that solo that just cranks out of there like i love it how did all that's that come just, to be? it's just gang vocals i mean when <laughs> when you don't have a bunch of guys that are real harmonious with their vocal abilities, you know, plus plus you're singing a song like that, you know, you rely on gang vocals. And, you know, that that song was originally on our first album. And what had happened was uh, doing this album, uh, we were one song short and the original uh, external hard drives for the first album had gotten stolen and we couldn't find them anywhere and i happened to find a disc with that song which was the best song it was played the most from the first album we did the best with that song i found a cd disc with those files on them and i happened to send them to pedro and forgot about it and uh, he asked for the lyrics the next day he sent them back he said here there's song number 10 now we're done and um, so it was kind of a fluke that this ended up being on the, that locked and loaded ended up being on the album, which ended up being our first video for this album. But uh, the the gang vocals, man, it's just it's just about attitude, you know. I, I mean, love it just, the solo it, in it. I absolutely love, and the way you go into it. Yeah, way you know we we do that, and and we've extended it uh, live that because it's so airy right there in that solo section yeah that's uh, that's why where, I, that stood out it separated it from the pack yeah that's so that's where we'll go into like the drum solo the bass solo and then i come right back into it uh with that solo and it lays out perfectly so it's just pretty cool how we've worked it up live too but it's probably one of my favorite solos to play as far as feel goes you know it's just it's not real technical, but, you know, it's really cool. You could tell that you enjoyed it when you filmed it, too. It was like, yeah, we got it. We captured it. Yep, yep. Oh, are you on tour with anyone now, and where are you headed, if so? No, we're, uh, we've got a show coming up, a suicide benefit show, August uh, 21st in uh, Maitland, Florida. And then uh, August 26th, we go down to Clearwater, Florida to play at OCC. Uh, we're having shows worked on they're trying to get some shows set up for us with some uh bigger name bands um and we're not going to go out and play every single bar i mean we're, we're just not going to do it you know we, we we played with like i said texas hippie coalition saliva 
you know, we want to try to have a good crowd and, and do some shows that are, you know, beneficial. Uh, not that I think playing all dive bars is beneath us. I just think that it's, it's kind of pointless after a while, you know, it is. It is. So uh, who's been your favorite band that you've played with? Uh, either musically or personality wise, either one that we've played with. I, I think that, uh, I was amazed how Texas Hippie was. I, I didn't think that Texas Hippie would be as great as they were. You know, I mean, I knew they were good, but live they were really amazing. Um, you know, and then Saliva, you know, I started the band, this band in, in Memphis, you know, which is where they're from. And, uh, you know, so I, I kind of know those guys a little bit and I, I had fun with them too. You know, I mean, they were good shows. Um, I would say the overall setting of the the Texas Hippie show was the best one. All right. Um, I asked people to shoot me a question, and it's one of the one of the eight here. And number six, he wrote T Rex. I have a feeling he meant T Rex. Um, do they do any covers live? And if so, which? Yeah, we do. Uh, I'm so against covers. I'm so against because, Amen. you know, they tribute bands and cover bands have just made it real Poisoned hard for scene. us original bands. Huh? Yes. Poison. Well, you know, they and, well, it's not just them. I mean, they're they're catering to the venues who want a human jukebox. So it makes it hard for original acts. But uh, so I'm really against doing covers. But uh, we have picked up a couple and I, if we're going to do a cover i want it to be i don't want it to be that standard you know welcome to the jungle or, or sweet child of mine or that constant song you hear every day yeah um, so, so we uh we do uh high wire by badlands and uh Ooh, my singer he, he pulls it off ray gillen is as a bitch to pull off and and pedro pulls it off um and then we've added uh monkey business by skid row so we're not picking you know i remember you and and all that stuff so we're picking some that are kind of kind of known but not you know just rammed down your throat you know so but we're trying to keep everything original i don't want to fall into that you know what i mean i, I like how humble you are uh, G gillian's hard to sing it gloss right over the fact that you're shredding through what jakey lee am i correct here yeah jakey's jakey's not easy either man you know, so, so I fake it good. I fake it really well, I guess. So, you know, as long as I can cover it up and and be happy about it. Uh, there you go, T Rex or T Trex, in case that really is what it is. A seven. Everyone thinks that social media clicks equal success, but it seems that labels are, in many cases, still the best way to get those clicks. So, what would you say to other bands who are looking for the best way to achieve things? Because you hear people say no to labels, and other people say yes because they've got the money for the advertising. What have you found? I don't think I would sign. I, I've worked for Universal. Uh, I've worked for MCA, Warner, Electra Atlantic, you know, in the distribution facilities out in California and in Memphis. And, you know, a lot of the times instead of partying at the beginning of this band, I was reading law books and I was reading about the business and it, they would really have to offer us kid rock money, you know, because all they really are is a big, huge, high interest bank, you know, and, and the result is a sad VH1 behind the scenes, you know, story. Um, so I, I think you have a better chance of being independent. I mean, it's not easy because you're you're out of pocket. You're spending a lot of money and to do it right, you this CD, these videos, this this promotion, we have I've dumped a lot of money into it. But you know, you, you're either going to do it or you're not. I mean, it just depends on what you can do. Um, merchandise is a good way for us to make money. So instead of spending the money by having T-shirts made, I bought the pre heat uh, silk screen machines. It's you, you know, you know we. So our profit margin increased. So you try to find ways to do that. Uh, you know, instead of renting a tour bus, you try to find one to buy, you know, 
it, it hurts initially, but in the end, you know, at the end of the day, you'll at least have something, you know, and your profit noticed, margin will increase. It said the Death Star Records. So that is, that's just you guys? Dark Star Records is Dark our Star, distributor. Yeah, what? Dark Star. Dark Star is our distributors. Dark Star, Sony, uh, uh, Sony and uh, Universal. They're our distributor. Aha. Uh -huh. So, so they they get us in Walmart. They get us in the stores. They get us online. Uh, you know, we have to give them a cut because they do that. Um, so they've gotten us in a lot of places. You know, uh, as far as a signing a big huge record deal and and you know have to sign over publishing and and royalties for the rest of your life i just we were not going to do that you know i mean i've said it before that at the end of the day if it comes to an end tomorrow the only thing you'll have left is your songs uh so if my song is going to be a tampon commercial i want to make sure i'm getting paid for it and not it being authorized by someone else you know what i mean very wise advice i, I people have always asked there you go that's the way people who have asked here listening on the Oprah radio that is how you get around distribution possibly without having to sign over wise advice for those who tuned in all right my famous last question um, you probably do a ton of interviews, and they always pick the questions, and you never get to pick one. So what is something that you're amazed that you haven't been asked or something that you would tell everybody that maybe hasn't come up? I don't know, man, because, you know, the, doing the whole interview thing is really, even though I've we've done a lot and I've done a lot, especially in the last year, I'm so guarded about everything that I do in my life. You know, all the guys are in Florida. Everyone's kind of socially. And, you know, I'm further out in, in Georgia and moving further to the, the mountains and, and, and the country. Um, I don't I don't know. I think it's the questions I, in my head that I just want to dodge, you know, personal personal questions. I think I just uh, try to try to avoid, you know, um, right into that. Hmm. It's an amen to that. Yep. All right. My name is Sam DeGangi. You are Jeff LaSawyer with Voodoo Moonshine. And you are listening to Neopa Radio WNPA LP on 102.5 FM Canton, Ohio. Thank you so much. Break a leg out there. I'm looking forward to hearing more music. Hey man, thanks for having me. And uh, tell your people to go to VoodooMoonshineRocks.com, buy our merchandise, buy our stuff, keep us afloat. Yes, and you know, and I, I've seen some of it, but I haven't got a chance to look at all the merch yet. With a name like Voodoo Moonshine, you just know the clothing is going to be primo. We got tons of stuff. We got all kinds of stuff, you know. And like I said, we bought this silk screening machine, so we have everything you could think of. You know, we got pick packs, we got koozies, coolers, hats, uh, T-shirts, hoodies, jet, everything. You know, it's a way to make money. So, friends, I'm going to end it with the worst pun ever. Voodoo moonshine, give them a shot. Okay, that was horrible. Good night, friends. God bless. <laughs>